Hot on the heels of our last crunchy phone video, yet another has arrived. I know, I know. I'll take all flaming down in the comments for this one. I'm sorry. Anyway, this is an HTC Arrive, aka the HTC 7 Pro, to our friends across the, the sea. And this is, as the back says here, a Windows phone, and this is one I actually did own when I was on Sprint. Now, this is one of my <laughs> more favorite, from a hardware perspective, Windows phones, at least during Windows Phone 7, because not only was it a very, like, small phone for the most part, like, Let's put it up next to a original Pixel here. Pretty nice. But it also had another trick up its sleeve. A tilting display and a keyboard. So yeah, and it had a five megapixel camera with flash and a weird tri-wing screw on the back here. So this is gonna be a little bit of a weird video as we'll get into in a minute here. The oleophobic is long gone because this thing is collecting fingerprints like no tomorrow and to get the battery cover off you actually extend the slider out and it exposes a little channel here and boom another metal back panel how nice so here we have our battery and I think there is no date code on this battery but I think just looking at it this battery might be pining for the fjords a little bit it still holds a decent charge but I do know it feels a little bit just a little bit swollen. So I'm not gonna, I wanna replace this at some point, but I'm just gonna keep it in here and just kinda keep an eye on it. Here's the back, and as you'll notice, as is the case with most Windows phones, really don't give a shit about the MEID at this point. I'm never gonna use this phone, because even though I'm technically on Sprint because they merged with T-Mobile, I'll never be able to activate this thing. <laughs> so. There is no SD card slot, but if you remember the last video that I took, you may remember that I said something about a SD card that I put in this phone here that is specially formatted. And that actually is because it came out of this phone originally. Because Windows Phone 7 devices, except I believe the uh, Lumia devices, all had this weird quirk about them. And they had non-user accessible SD card slots. And that's how they did their storage. So, and I explained that this phone had an internal SD card that was just, you know, the internal EMMC storage being partitioned. This phone literally has an internal SD card. And I figure, you know, we'll do something different with this video and we're actually going to go ahead, dig into it and find that SD card. I've already done this once, so I know what I'm doing for the most part. Watch as I break something nonetheless. We have that weird tri-wing bit there, which does have to come off, and just standard tri-wing screwdriver will get it just right off. And this is also for those of you who are who have one of these phones that want to throw a better SD card into it to upgrade it, or to use this as like some weird Zune HD with a keyboard, because the Zune UI was really something else, and I really do like it. So we have four more screws, one here, one here, one here, and one here. And one of these actually has a warranty seal on it. So don't take that off if you are uh, time traveling and you go back to 2011 and a time when HTC one still made phones and two will honor the warranty for this thing or Sprint for that matter. Going back to the time when Sprint existed as its own carrier because now it's just rebranded T-Mobile. So after this, we still need to just need to get in here and this is where if you have some longer nails, it makes this much easier. Yeah, this can be a real pain. If you have an iSesimo, and I do, I just don't know where it is. That'll also make this a little more trivial. There's enough of a gap here so you can get it off without having to worry about, like, if you're going to break something in the process. The only thing I would advise you be careful with is when you're getting this off, this little bit right here is not very well fortified. So there is a very weak point right here where this thing could just snap clean off. So if you're gonna wrench on this thing, be careful about this little bit here. So all we would need to do is just take an ice and kind of just go around and unsnap it. 
keeping the keyboard open, of course, because you can get it in here. So I'm going to do this off camera so you guys don't have to watch me suffer. Thankfully, once you've done enough snaps, the whole thing just comes right off. And yeah, you can see just how wiggly this thing is and how very fragile that little part is. Now, once we're done, we still have one more layer of this proverbial onion to go after. We have a few screws just all around here. And now this last part should just not fight you too much at all. I forgot a screw. If it resists you too much at this part, you've you've forgotten a screw somewhere. And just like that, it comes right off. So here's the inside of the phone. Finally, we can see the lovely hinge kind of doing its work here. But more importantly, we are here for this. Like I said, literally, it is an SD card lives inside the phone. Just like that. Now, this did have capped on tape on it, and obviously if we were living in uh, 2011, I would recommend putting capped on tape back on it to hold the, the SD card in place, because it's just friction held in there. I'm not using, obviously not using this phone for anything, so it's just gonna go in there without anything really holding it into the slot, because again, this is just sitting on my shelf. I'm not doing anything with it. So, these screws back in this part, that, then the screws back in here and we're done with this. So I'm gonna do this off camera since you pretty much just need to follow what I did in reverse. It should also be noted that if you have the 7 Pro variant of this phone, you guys have it easy. Your card slot is literally right up here and you don't have to pull this secondary plastic layer off to get to it. And once all the screws are in, we just put this guy right back on. This little corner here tends to put up a bit of a fight, but that's pretty much it. We just need to put the remaining screws back in. Obviously, you would want to pop your battery in and test to make sure everything works before you do this. And you will have to actually factory reset the phone when you replace the SD card, because the SD card is actually formatted as a part of the internal storage. Basically, it is the physical embodiment of what this does in software with its e internal eMMC storage. And with our weird little tri-wing bit back in, we can now actually carry on with the video. Anyway, everything works. Kind of, I mean, I know it works, so let's go ahead and turn it on. And we get a standard boot, not unlike you'd see on an HTC Android phone of the time. Oh, good old Windows phone. But as you can see, everything works perfectly fine. Now, as you would see if you do did this just to test, if you hadn't factory wiped, it would pop up a message saying basically, hey, the storage has changed, please wipe the phone and do it all over again. And to do that, what you would actually do is when you start up the phone by holding the power button, you would hold both the volume up and volume down keys as you're pressing to start the phone, a menu saying, hey, would you like to wipe this phone? As we can see, we can pop this open with the nice Windows Phone sound effects. And if we just poke around, we have a full backlit keyboard, which is very nice. I love this phone for text messages. Unfortunately, this was very let down by Sprint, which is sad that they're the only ones who got this phone in the US. It's been years. I can't type for crap. But when you would type out a text message, hard cap at 160 characters, it wouldn't let you, say, overflow the message into a new message and then send one right after the other. It would just hard cap you at 160. So you'd have to enter 160 characters, send, enter 160, send, which is something even Verizon managed to get right, which is kind of surprising because they used the same network tech back then. This phone, however, just sucked for messaging because of that. Now, the thing is, this was actually in the manual. It said you can just keep typing and it'll overflow into a new message and you can keep right on pounding out those text messages on this beautifully spacious keyboard. However, because you couldn't do that, 
Sprint actually retconned the manual. They sent out a new manual saying, with that whole thing removed, saying you will have to send after every single cap, which is mind-bogglingly stupid, and that's kind of why I didn't really last long with this phone. AT&T's Windows phones were so much better on that front for obvious reasons. So, going to Zune, and you will notice that, you know, I have, I love cigarettes after sex, <laughs> but I know how this album sounds on good headphones, so that's why I like to use it to test. It has some good, like, got some good dynamic range, in my opinion, and I have it in flack, I own it in flack. Just make my own lossy versions that'll play on this without having to rely on somebody else to make them. So I have full control and I can tell, you know, what it sounds like. I'm gonna go ahead and just cue it up just to show off the Zune interface. I'm not gonna play it because I don't wanna get copyright strikes, but it's just, this is where swiping to go back and forward came from for the most part, I think. I don't recall another phone doing this, but the Zune UI was so just, awesome and I loved it so much they really screwed it up on Windows Phone 8 because I had a Lumia 810 and that phone it would lag so bad when you go back and forward it really sucked so much and I the only thing I don't like is how the playback controls are up here so you kind of have to really go for it but this was a smaller phone it didn't matter so much and I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the volume all the way I love the volume indicators, it was super nice. But I'm gonna go ahead and play this. If we go ahead and lock it, we get our lock screen controls too. I really like this. In a lot of ways, I really feel like Windows Phone was ahead of its time. I really do miss Windows Phone quite a lot, actually, in using this. Because this is a 2011 phone. HTC Hub, I'm pretty sure, doesn't work anymore. I mean, none of this is going to work because I don't have an internet connection on this right now. But just going through this, it's shocking just how fast and fluid this is. Photo enhancer, let's give that a shot. In fact, speaking of photos, I forgot one of the hardware features of Windows Phone. Sadly, they stopped requiring it, and I think it was really, really kind of sucked, but you have a, f or a physical shutter button. So, you press it and hold it, you get quick access to your camera. And no, I do not want my location, but you can also just half press it to lock focus, and full press it to take your picture. I thought that was so cool because it's like a, a full-blown camera. And unfortunately, Windows phones didn't really have good cameras at the time. It wasn't until the Lumia 900, I believe the 800 may have had good cameras, I don't remember, we never got it here in the US, but the 900 had pretty decent cameras, the 920 had pretty damn good cameras, and the 1020 was just out of this world amazing with the cameras. I had a 1020, I miss that phone so much, I should probably buy another one at some point, but that's later. We can go into Sound Enhancer, and it's just like, we can, just going in and out of this thing is so quick and just easy. It does keep resetting my ringtone though, which is really weird, because I usually prefer, Back in the days when you couldn't actually customize your ringtone, good old symmetry. So let's go to about, and as we can see here, I did upgrade this to 32 gigabytes, and it is successful. And we're running Windows Phone 7.5, which is the background kind of gives away. It was called Mango. Now, the fun story with Windows Phone, and what I think was the beginning of the end with Windows Phone, is they made a humongous blitz with the Lumia 900. That thing was advertised everywhere. If you walked into an AT&T store at the time, they just had it everywhere. They were like telling you how amazing it was. And it was. It was an amazing phone and I really liked it when I had it. The problem was, I swear, like not even a month later. As those of us who bought it on launch, I think our the ink on our contracts had barely just dried at that point because we had like a 30, back then we had a 30 day remorse period. I had bought it a little after launch so I still had time to return it when this all went down. But they announced, hey, here's what's next for Windows Phone, Windows Phone 8. By the way, no Windows Phone 7 handset will run Windows Phone 8. It uses a different kernel, it's unified with desktop windows. So everybody on Windows Phone 7, you're SOL. And they had just released the Lumia 900, only to say, hey, also, at the end of the year, you're getting the 920. 
I'm pretty sure a lot of people did not like that. They bought into the hype for Windows Phone 7.5. There was that whole smoke by Windows Phone thing that was just amazingly well done in my opinion. Like the hype was real for Windows Phone back in 2012. Then Microsoft said, oh yeah, none of you guys who bought into this. Yeah, past the end of the year, you guys are pretty much forgotten. They released Windows Phone 7.8, which this phone never got. Surprisingly, there are unofficial ROMs that allow you to put it on this phone, but this phone never got it. And Windows Phone 7.8 was kind of an update that brought it in line with Windows Phone 8. It brought a lot of the UI tweaks and such like that. It still remained that this was Windows Phone 7 at its core, and Windows Phone 8 was such this big departure. Because I believe this is using the CE kernel for Windows Phone, and Windows Phone 8 was using the NT kernel, which is what the whole big change up. So it really sucked because again, you had all this hype behind Windows Phone, all this momentum, and Microsoft just dropped a big old deuce on them and it really sucked. I returned my phone the minute that announcement was over and just went back to Android and it was really unfortunate. Because again, the Lumia 900 was a boss of a phone and I really do want to get my hands on one one of these days. But I really think again that Windows Phone was a UI ahead of its time. It was a very flat interface. I would wager that it actually inspired a lot of other UIs out there with the Metro design language and the flat, stark UI. I would imagine this is also kind of why Windows, uh, <laughs> I almost said Windows Phone 7. iOS 7 kind of went with a flatter design too is because Microsoft was out here doing it before they did. And I know a lot of the people uh, on the Windows Phone subreddit at the time were saying, oh, iOS 7 is so bad, it just copies Windows Phone, blah, 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 blah. And I mean, it's hard not to see the inspiration there because Windows Phone kind of brought the whole flat thing to the mainstream. But it was just really a shameful thing that this didn't catch on. So before we wrap up, I'm gonna go over a couple of odds and ends here because this is like the stock. I don't have any apps installed. And I don't even think I can install apps because I'm pretty sure the app store is gone. But if we go here, the People Hub was kind of the answer to people saying, well, where's my Facebook app? Where's my Twitter app? Where's this app, that app? This integrated with all those services once upon a time. So when you come in here, you could be like, oh yeah, I could see the feed across Twitter, Facebook, not Instagram, unfortunately. That was one of the big apps from Windows Phone because it took forever to come to Windows Phone. And when it did, it was too little too late. Same thing with Snapchat. It never came to Windows Phone. And actually, a couple of people wrote their own Snapchat clients and got banned for doing it. Fun times. So this was that, that answer to where's the app because it was just all supposed to be integrated. And Microsoft letting this go was also one of their big mistakes because it was so cleanly integrated and they just kind of pieced it out in Windows Phone 8 onward. And it's really a shame. And they actually started this with the Kin, if you remember the Kin. It was arranged much the same way. You would sign into your social media networks and they would all be integrated into the phone itself, kind of like here. Funny that. It's almost like the Kin was running a beta version of Windows Phone 7. It kind of was. So, yeah, that's really it. I mean, it also integrated with your Xbox at the time. I'm pretty sure that doesn't work anymore for obvious reasons. So it was like, you also got the Xbox phone. You know, the phone that would integrate with your, if you were in the Xbox the ecosystem. So, unfortunately, just a sad story that it never caught on. And when it did get momentum, it just kind of got blown by Microsoft being Microsoft and saying, well, sorry, you guys are not getting any more updates. And we know you literally just bought the phone, but it's going to be obsolete before your two-year contract is even up. If AT&T had shown mercy upon people and let them get an early upgrade to Windows Phone 8 handsets, maybe it would have softened the blow a little bit. But the damage was kind of done, and AT&T really didn't show a lot of mercy. On top of that, there was also the whole problem of upgrades were weird, because like if you had the Lumia 920 and you wanted the upgraded version of the 920, well, guess what? The 928, I believe, was the upgraded version. I can't remember them all the model numbers. But the successor to the 920 was on Verizon. 
So if you wanted the true successor to the 920 that wasn't the 1020, it was sitting on Verizon, which does nothing for you as an AT&T customer. So the whole th- the, the exclusivity mess also kind of contributed to Windows Phone's downfall, in my opinion. There was no truly carrier-neutral option until... 2013, 2014 or so. I believe it was 2014, actually. And by then, it was really too little too late. Windows Phone had a brief burst of momentum, and it kind of got squandered. So this video is getting a bit on the long side, and I do apologize. This is going to be one of my longer ones in the last few months, but hopefully you find it entertaining and me kind of me being sad over Windows Phone. And well, until the next video, I'll see you guys later.